I still ain't could teach a boy touching on my nephew Stirring up the dragon in my head Blood bubbling like a boy might have full Hold our ears as or at least get a page from the dread Tired of the perverts, loose in the classroom Set on destruction of innocence Ready for the battle with the demon Sure say I know me one willing for stick a head on a fence Sisters unafraid to make an example of a guy Or a woman for that matter who would ever dare to try See through the future is dependent on the youth where we are built This is warfare, this is not a drill So in the Ki ora Michelle, te akina te Māori o te wahine, te akina te tapu o te whari tangata, te akina te Māori o nga tamariki, me nga mokopuna. Te hei Māori ora. Ki ora. Ki ora. Beautiful. Uh, How are finally, you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Finally we get to do this. It's just been so busy. <sighs> it's been, yeah, just, it has been in the pipe works and look, I, I, yeah. A lot of it's because yeah, I've been busy and I've had I was recovering from pneumonia and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, oh, yes, yes, reality intrudes it. You know, we're just always fighting a rear guard action. Mm. But I, I'd just like to say, I think we'd best get our disclaimers out. Yeah, that I'm Ngati Kahu. You are Ngati Kahu Nunu. All right. We do not speak for every Maori. All right. We all we have a shared common view of Te Ao, mm -hmm. and then we have differences. So, you know, I'm from the top of the north and you're from the east coast. Right. And in no way do I speak for everyone up north, mm. and in no way are you speaking for all the east coasters. But what we are speaking is truth to power. Mm. Absolutely. How, Tika. How, how academia has infiltrated our culture and is stealing mm. it to mm. fit this trans ideology narrative. Mm -hmm. We have no evidence of it, Michelle. I haven't seen it in Motete, Haka, carvings, Waita, Wiping, Waita, mm. even Ori Ori. You know, like there's anywhere. no, yeah, there's no lullaby saying, You were born in the wrong body, little baby. Mm. <laughs> there's nothing like that, you know. <laughs> you know, but you know, as as we we're always saying, there's a place for everyone in Maori tanga, and there Absolutely. always has been. Yeah. That is our culture and our nature. Yeah. Acceptance and acknowledgement is not ideology. Absolutely, and it is the ideology that we are addressing, not personalities. That's right, and people have to remember this. You know, like mm. as a class, men are pigs, and I love men. I know mm. some beautiful men. Mm. But as a class, you know, what was it, 66,000 women killed a year? Yeah. Globally? Yeah. And that's that superior, you know, the, uh, and the, this world is for them. It's a man's world, you know. James yeah. Brown, that, that abusive a-hole. <laughs> he had it right when yes. he said that. You know? Yes. And, and then all the holly weirdos get involved and push all this and, and um, you know, like we've really lost the way. We have really lost the way mm. when you can openly – sexualize and groom mm. children when you can openly colonize cultures and no one bats an eye mm. and even like for us at least some you know quite a few, some go along with it mm. oh yes that's our culture <laughs> yes it's like that will what's going is pinning of the two spirit mm. Yeah, and yeah. so I'm back to acknowledgement, mm. acceptance, and accommodation is yeah. not ideology. Yeah, absolutely. Look, if yeah. anyone, yeah. if anyone in our whānau, which means family, by the way, um, you know, requires help of any kind, medical, psychological, doesn't matter. They deserve it. That's what they and mm. they deserve help. That is, um, uh, you know, they deserve help. You know, that is with integrity. Not with ideology. Yeah, well, it's, I'd say, but, but the Māori accepting this, Michelle, it, it really fucks with my head, actually, because, mm. you know, we accept, we acknowledge, we embrace. Yeah. And, and if our whānau needed help, mm. we would give them the help to the best of our ability. Absolutely. But what's happening with this ideology is it's become a one-size-fits-all. Affirm, mm. affirm, affirm. Mm. And so... 
Like there's 500 children in New Zealand on puberty blockers. Mm, yeah, I've seen that cut out. Jeez. So, and research shows that mm. if you go on to puberty blockers, 100% go on to the wrong sex hormones. Mm. Yeah. Which is commonly referred to as cross sex hormones, but they're mm. not cross sex. No, it's the wrong, wrong sex. sex hormones. A hundred percent of this, these five hundred youth will go on to the wrong sex hormones, and they will be irreversibly harmed. Mm. And this is just the start. Like this is just the beginning of it all. Five hundred at the start. Like, yes. what is it going to be this time next year, Cuddy? If this is not stemmed, you know, if if the people at the top. Um, and the professionals involved don't start being honest about this, it'll get out of hand, or excuse me, <clears throat> but it will. It will it, get out of hand. Yeah, and, and so that's 500 youth sterilised. Mm. Of them, I would suspect 80% to be female. Mm. Right, so that's 80% rendered sterile. Mm. Onset, early onset menopause. Mm. Um, the osteoporosis, that bone thing. Absolutely, yeah. You know, these are not reversible. They mm. are not a wait and see, and the mm. government's lying. Yeah. The same way they lied about the COVID jabs. Yeah, yeah. It's all a lie. Mm. And, you know, I'm, like, I I grew up in New Zealand. I'm mm. appalled at the government, Curry. Mm. You know, this isn't, like, my parents were really political, and so, you know, we were involved and I just cannot believe, like at the moment, mm. New Zealand government has been sitting under urgency since Friday to pass 30 new bills. I heard that. Hey, for our listeners, just explain what that means. So what that means is when they're sitting under urgency, they do not have to consult mm. is what that means. Yeah, so, that's just and, and so what they're trying to do is shove shove these bills through. And I did see that the speaker, I don't know his name, Kare, sorry, but the speaker of parliament had a few words to say about that the other day. Mm. Yes, I'm I'm not sure who it is there. I mean, it's just one ball dead after another, as far mm. as I'm concerned. I've lost yeah. all faith. I will be spoiling my ballot. I will not vote for mm. anyone yeah. that cannot protect women and children. And New yeah, Zealand unanimously passed self sex ID. Yeah, that's that's As the thing of, that is just so unbelievable. I mean, you know, I'm I live here in Australia. I I was you know raised in my cult, you know, raised back home as well in my culture and all that type of stuff. Um, by the way, I'm the only one in Manawahine Kore all that is living in Australia. The rest are all back home on the Fenua. Um, you know. So anyway, um, what was I saying? Gosh, I lost my, my train of thought just then, Cuddy. What was I saying? Yeah. <laughs> don't know. Don't know what I was saying. <laughs> anyway. I was listening, but I yeah, can't no, pick a... it up either. <laughs> this happens quite I mean, frequently. Just, <laughs> yes, it was just so much about the bills under urgency. Mm. And, I mean, you know, it's just too much, Michelle. Yeah. The Three Waters is going through. They've managed to, um, this government and the ones before them have all managed to separate us and keep us separate. They've said, Māori want the water, they'll keep it for themselves. Yeah. You have mm. no hope of saving anything if Māori are not involved. Let yeah. me make it clear. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. only way we have some stuff is Māori mm. is involved. That's mm. excluding all the auntie and uncle Toms that are selling us out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we've got um, we've got plenty of those, haven't we? Yes, we do. You know, at the moment there's a big hoo-ha about Ruapehu and the ski lift company's gone bust. Well, see, I've seen this happening time and time again, Michelle. These mm. little companies, these tourist things go bust. And, oh, hello, overseas investors come in. Mm. Hashtag by design. I yeah. have no faith. In any New Zealand, this is the 53rd Parliament of New Zealand, and mm. they disgust me to my core. Mm. They are sterilizing and harming children, and they are harming women. As of last week, they put a man, say his name, Matthew Richard Nelson, mm. and he went into the restaurant through a back door and mm. stabbed up people. He is now Electra Pandora with mm. no box. And that was the that was the second that's the second iteration because the first iteration he he was arrested um like mm. on the day of 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 the crime yeah. that he committed and then the next day he rocks up and caught Emma and now he's what Electra Pandora yes. come on bro 
Come on. Yes, say Come. his name, Matthew yes. Richard Nelson. But he's in the woman's estate now. As, mm. as you know, we went to corrections last month to speak about men in women's prisons yeah. and men with their synthetic sex identity. Yeah, well done. And, of course, you know, it just, you know, everyone looked like we just shit in their mouths, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing. they need it though, Cutting. They they need to have, and that's why we we you know we hold the hard line. I was saying to a fellow uh, sister during the week, you know, mm. we 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 really, um, I mean, it shouldn't even be considered the hard line. It's just the you know the sane line, <laughs> the practical line. You know, we believe in not believe actually. We don't even believe in biological reality. We acknowledge it because regardless of what we believe, biological reality exists. Yes, yes. And, you know, if people would stop infantilizing us mm. and infantilizing the fact, you know, oh, you, you believe in um, sky fairies and all your, all your gods, you know, that just infantilizes it. Whereas, you know, I look outside and I see things twirling. I'm seeing Tafiri Matia in mm. all his glory. Yeah. Can't you tell me he doesn't exist? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and so there's that cultural thing. We must hard mm. like the language because the difference between us and, mm. and to we is mm. we're fighting for our very culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It isn't just our sex. We are no. fighting for our culture. And it's, you know, it's not the first time, first time either. And look, it's not the best culture. It's not the only culture. But it's our culture, you know, and I get a bit, it's, it's, it's a bit disconcerting, I must say, sometimes to watch from over here, from across the ditch, you know, on YouTube and, you know, online, obviously, and not just online, but in real life. But anyway, um, you know, conversations around Māori and oh. I just, um, I just uh, yeah, look, I must say, though, for me, I get, I understand why the government's suggestion or proposal that all students in New Zealand need to speak te reo, which means the language, Māori language. I actually understand that on it, but for a very different reason. I mean, I yeah. personally don't believe that our language belongs in the mouth of those who are not connected to our culture whatsoever, because it does not take long, right, for, right. for the language to be contaminated. And once the language is contaminated, you can kiss goodbye to, <laughs> you know. Yes. I'm, I, I concur with that, Michelle. I And, and for different reasons, again, mm. you know, I don't think it should be compulsory. Yeah, definitely. No. Yes, definitely. It, it shouldn't be compulsory. And then the other thing that really irks me about it, as you saw, and I believe it was in the um, SIFs, you know, the Oranga Tamariki, Overhaul yeah, when they yeah. called for ten percent to have mouldy knowledge. That mm. means anyone can go do a six week course and suddenly they can get chosen. It's no, I say no. And you know this firmly. is yeah, and, and I totally you know Tika, I totally support that because you know we are seeing and we've talked about this quite often on our channel that slowly but surely our culture is being dictated to us from government and academia like. That's never, our culture was not born out of government or academia at all. You know, everyone knows no. that. Everyone but knows now, that. I'm, I'm not fluent, Michelle. Mm. Okay? I'm not either. I'll never, mm. I'll never ever say I am. Mm. But what I've been noticing, and now I could be wrong, mm. but just what I've been noticing with some of what I've been reading, it would appear that with all this renaissance and everyone having access to te reo, Mm. is that it's now being contaminated and formed in English, then translated, not the other way around. Yeah, and you're absolutely, well, I can actually confirm for you that that is in fact the case because um, I do know uh, a few, you know, fluent, actually, I, we call, well, they call it the old language. <laughs> That's what they call yes, it because yes. it's, because I'm like, we don't understand what these, what this new, yeah. deal, <laughs> we don't know what they're saying. And that's because uh, sentence construction uh, but also expression as well, everything. Like, I don't think people quite appreciate how important language is. Mm. I really don't yes. think they do. Yes. And um, and the only reason why, I guess, you know, we we understand it is because, you know, again, we were raised, you know, back home, um, you know, in, yeah. in our culture and all that type of stuff. And um, there were words and expressions, I couldn't even, I don't have any off, off the top of my head right now, that you could not translate into English. That's right. Yeah. But you don't have that now. Yeah. But no, not now. No, everything. And, and, and so it's a yeah. bit of, 
Sorry. Yeah. Sorry Kevin. <laughs> no, and, and the other thing that, like, when we were at this corrections meeting, mm. there was a identity, I am EV, and identity, motivated extreme violence, and faith, motivated extreme violence. When I questioned about the identity motivated extreme violence mm -hmm. and asked if it was to do with this gender woo-woo, they emphatically said, no, it is to do with your race. So they've taken, it, it would appear, mm -hmm. and, and I, my response was, no, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I do not identify as Māori, I am, I am Māori. Māori. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Oh, my God. So it would appear that mm. the New Zealand government mm. is following the unholy trinity of critical race theory, mm. queer theory, yep. and that social justice bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. It, I believe those three are underpinning everything, and it is the unholiest of trinities. And they're blaming you know, tertiality in our culture for it all as well. That really, oh, my God, if, you know. Oh, if I read, midwives one. Oh. Oh, yeah. And also Ministry of Education as well. Like, yes. if you go and read yes. their guidelines, you know, right at the start, just like with the, you know, um, uh, Midwifery Council as well, you know, they go on about tertiality and, and it says this. And, yes. no, it, doesn't, it doesn't say that in our treaty at all. Our treaty is not long or convoluted. There's only three articles and it's available for everyone to read. It's not yes. difficult to understand. Awesome. And I think what people don't realise, Michelle, is the behemoth behind this machine. You know, it's slick marketing, it's well-oiled, and it has pots and pots of money. The last research I read, it was $37 trillion. And now when you, you know, and, and they do target the lonely, mm. the poor, the neurodivergent, the autistics. Yeah. Disenfranchised, yeah, that's I, right. Yes, the baby dykes and everything. I mean, mm. it, it's vile because I know as a kid, you know, and, and I think about little children whose home life is a little bit odd and mm. not quite meeting their needs. Yeah. And so they, you know, get to meet this person who's just love bombing them, mm. love bomb, love bomb, mm. because their needs aren't being met and their social life's not quite developed. They don't recognise it as love bombing. Mm. Um, and it doesn't even just have to be the home life. It could just be their level of maturity. It's mm. not always the parents' fault. But when they take them by the hand and lead them to the clinics, then they can be blamed. Then they can be blamed. But with all this love bombing of vulnerable people, that's, you know, it reminds me to be brutally honest of pedophiles, the way they groom families yeah, to get access. Ab absolutely. And love bombing is all, it's very superficial. Yes, you know. yes. And so when you don't recognise it as such, you're going to, you know, lap it up like a thirsty yes. puppy. Yeah, and, and absolutely. You're going to believe it. Yeah. And because, because the media and the government are complicit in this um, whitewash and gaslighting, where do people go to get an alternative voice, an mm. alternative view? Where, where do they go? There's, you know, like in New Zealand, we've got us, mm. Informed Consent, Women's Liberation, um, LAVA, LGB Alliance, LGB Standout. Um, speak up for woman, um, Bob McCoskey, mm -hmm. Family First. You know, there's a few. Oh, Helen Horton. Yes. You know, I've seen her mm. name around a lot. Mm. Um, and unless you're either in the church or you know some Lincoln, how do they know? I was mm. at um, Too Funny Tour last week or the week before speaking with one of the old nannies there. And so I spoke about our midwives got council guidelines. Mm. And firstly, it was very hard for me to sit on my hands and not react when I questioned because I didn't want to stare here. Mm. But I, I managed it. And then there was this pause and then this big bark laughter <laughs> when I was talking about kahu porkai and that. And mm. so um, I thought, yes. And then when I told her, this old nanny says to me, porn, it's porn. It's, you know, you know what, even even the optics of it all too, Cuddy, 
you know, obviously not all of them are into porn and not all of them are pedophiles, of course not. But there are quite a significant, you know, portion of them that are. I mean, the entire ideology is actually predicated on pedophiles, you know, like, sex. you know, and, and sex and porn. Since when do children so, need to know who, who you're having sex, sex with? Since, since never. when do children need to know this? Ooh, did you see the bloody Ponsonby Centre? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. You know? And and so I, I've written a, ter- a, a stern letter to them because that, that's all we've got is, is the ability to write letters that get filed. So, you know, back to this midwife thing, it's really important and I just want to put it out here and now that Manawahini Kōrero sent 160 emails to every sitting MP, and we got 160 automated replies. Mm. I'm disgusted with them in there, following their unholy trinity. And, you know, this Midwives Council, removing all our words, removing our words, and then they consulted they consulted with, uh, I'll, I'll get the numbers. Mm. I'll get the numbers because I've got them written down. I think it was 16 of them over two years. And um, but I want to know how they even thought that was adequate when there are 103 recognised iwi in New Zealand yeah. and you have a panel of 16 people and mm. half of them are party and half of them are men yeah. on the Midwest Council. Yeah. You know, it's, what kind of fuckery is this? Mm, as Amy Winehouse what? said. Aye, aye. Mm. And, and then we have uh, Jamie Veal, who was the secretary of WPATH and the president of New Zealand PATH. Mm. Or PATHA, yeah. PATHA, that's it. But What's what he doing, doing on there? The, yeah, exactly. Like, he's what, a what's his interest? a man who says he's a woman. Why is he consulted? Hey, also, Cuddy, has some... Has, um, is, Elizabeth Kitty Kitty, is she a mother? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't mm. think so. I don't think so but, either, but yeah. And and see, speaking of Elizabeth Kitty Kitty with a doctorate of art, mm. <laughs> which isn't health. No. I mean, we can all draw pretty pictures, mate. Mm. But there are 2,581,200 women in New Zealand, yeah. right? Yeah. The midwife... Council mm. want to change it for 12 yeah. mentally ill women. Mm, 12 and estimated, bet, yeah, yeah. Mm. 12 estimated, and I bet they park here. Yeah, well, that was the other thing. I, yeah, I wondered about that. You know, if there's 12 of them, how many of how many of that 12 are Tangata Whenua? Uh, Māori, sorry. For well, those they're listening. coming for us. They're changing all our marae practices. They're letting the men with their synthetic sex identity stand with the woman. Um, Yes, yes, you go stand there. I mean, if you ask me how oh, I identify as a girl, where should I stand? I'd say the car park. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> go you out know, there. Because, you know, for your ego mm. and your synthetic sex identity, you're changing my culture. Mm, mm. And you know what? Most Māori are still just trying to learn it and you're colonising it already. The yeah. language has changed. It, mm. There's just so many changes. Mm. And then you get the, it's always the same people at the top. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Kitty Kitty, mm. um, the Māori Women's Welfare League mm. that hadn't done two years of tax return, that's hemorrhaging members as word on the street. Mm. Interesting. They've got a new, well, did you know they've got a new, um, Oh, and you, I don't know what that, what they call them for, for Māori Women's Welfare League. Is it like president? Is that what they call them? New president? Oh, about time they stood her down because I believe it's the same woman that wrote on our midwife's document. It's always the same people. Hmm. Not two, two, yeah, it's written somewhere. Yeah, so, right. um, and now the problem with this PASA and this Jamie Veal, mm. like this organisation pushes unit as a sexual orientation. You're going to castrate our young men and mm. tell them it's normal. Yeah. It's an identity. And, and it's an identity. And I say, fuck off with that, you mm. liars, yeah. you pathological mm. liars. Yeah. They are going to castrate our young men and they're going to lock the breasts off our young women. 
before they've even got to puberty. Mm. This is what they're doing. People need to wake up and get angry. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to what you were saying just quickly, Di, um, about, you know, the money behind it, you know, the people mm. that are leading it, and, and, you know, they're not all, they're not necessarily, um, you know, visible either to all the, the kids that are involved. Like, I don't think any of the kids have even heard of Martin Rockman. I don't know. But, um, but it's also the fact that this has been planned for years. Yes. Yes, see, you know, and speaking of the money, Michelle, let's talk about, um, I believe it's gender minorities, okay? So they get this, okay? Because what's in the education? You have to have a rainbow-approved educator. That's not a psychologist. That's not a teacher. They just have to be rainbow-approved. And now what I've also noticed in the corporate world is companies are springing up to do this. So, so for sorry, so for is is that a requirement by the Ministry of Education by MOE? Yes, it's written in their things, <gasps> rainbow approved in their guidelines. education, and their guidelines. And so, what that means is, well, what it means to me, being the ever loving cynic that I am, is that that organisation has paid the twenty grand for the rainbow tick. So, Teachers yeah. don't even have to be present, and if Like any other teacher, like I said, of course they'll take that opportunity to go do some marking, have a coffee, ring some parents. You know, the teacher's day never ends. Mm. So, so, you know, gender minorities gets funding Mm. from the Ministry of Social Development, which is our social welfare, and our Tamariki arm. They get funding from Ministry of Health, Mm. This last round, they got three hits, three bites at the Wellington City Council funding mm. <laughs> under different, you know, the Mackenzies, Tyndall. And now there's a gay pilot whose name I can't remember, sorry, but he started a fund for gay men in the service in the Air Force. Right. But in that, mm. this is one organisation. Unbelievable. One organisation gets all that funding and yeah. still they want more and they talk mm. about being oppressed. We've got fucking kids eating out of rubbish bins here, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you want more money for your pretend synthetic sex identity. Mm. Get out of Dodge. Yeah. So there's 10 to 12 streams of funding for one rainbow organisation. and we have. We've got gender minorities, rainbow youth, rainbow. I've, I've got them written down. <laughs> no, that's all good. That's all good. Yeah. But, you know, and, and then to see the other thing that is really disgusting me is that we have 16 WPATH New Zealand members. Jeez. Where are they from? Six, Do you know? Right. Wellington, Dunedin, Waikato, Wellington, Tauranga. Auckland, Papamore, Foxton, Turakina, Auckland, wow. Bay of Plenty, Stratford, Wellington and Hamilton. And two of them are paediatrics. Well, I mean, that's pretty much up and down the country, isn't it? It is covered. And when I think about the smaller areas, like Foxton, Turakina, like... Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's what MWK want to do in the beginning of next year is hit the road, start educating people around the small areas. I'm not going to hit the cities. I'm not interested in the cities. I, I yeah, want to go enough. around small rural New Zealand. Of course, that takes putia, which we've got mm, none of. Which means Pinnacle money, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, that, so that our listeners know what you mean by hitting the road. So just explain what, what your idea right. is. Oh, sorry, sorry, Kelly. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I want to do some education. I want to do a travelling turf tour. You know, and this is before Posey comes. I've like, go up to fielding. Oh, yeah. Turakina, go to do a little couple of places mm. and just do a street corner and have flyers with information about the education. Because for me, the education yeah, nice. is my biggest bugbear. Yeah. Or oh, especially because you know. it's, yeah, it's in, yeah, they've infiltrated the schools, um, teaching all the, the young Tamariki and Mokopuna, children, grandchildren. 
Yeah, but they've, been, they've infiltrated it to such a degree, and this is the funding, back to the funding of how much mm. they're paid. So it is in every lesson, in every language, including sign. So they've written it for the neurodiverse. Oh. They've written it for yeah. the Christians. They've written it for Māori, Islanders, Chinese. You name it, it's in every language. And not only is it in every language, excuse me, it is in every subject. Mm. So, like one of the Sorry. questions, yeah, you know, imagine waking up and thinking you're another gender. How would that feel? Well, it would feel pretty bloody ridiculous because we can't change sex. It's, yeah. We are neither avocados or clownfish. No, that's exactly right. So, it's saturation is what you're talking about. It, it is. And, you know, like the other thing I've noticed, um, which is with this language, Michelle, is Māori are very, you know, I've always known we are very clear there's the atua, e or the atua, mm. there's us, there's the plants, there's the animals, there's the mm. insects. Yeah. They are very distinct groups. Mm. To, and our, our gods, like Maui, mm. um, I quite often say to people, oh, Maui's our Loki. He's our <laughs> he's Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, that's he's true. A, he's a shapeshifter. Yeah. Mm. But to presume mm. the arduous power of shape shifting for ourselves mm. is arrogant and it's extreme. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that's that narcissistic, you know, aspect to it, you know, bleeding into um Yes. Or bleeding all over the place. <laughs> it is mm. that and it's saturated everywhere. So mm. when I say thirty-seven trillion dollars, mm. I mean thirty-seven trillion dollars. Yeah. And and at the moment, so we're fighting this bloody gender ideology rubbish mm. from infiltrating our culture at the same time as they're selling humans. Yeah. You know, um, and using once again back to using Maori as the reason in the treaty because of our fungi system. Mm. And and so every you know, Tam Tamati Coffee. Why didn't he get one of his trans sisters to do it? Because they're men. To do surrogacy, you're talking about? Yes, to yeah. have his baby. He's having he's buying another child. Yeah, right. You know, and so all this disconnection, all this mm. disconnection from our teen nana, the yeah. commodifying our body. Mm. What they're doing is that they're actually removing our humanity. I mean, they've done that to women anyway years ago. Mm. And what they're doing now, like this non this idea that we can be non-binary is friggin' nonsense, of course. Um, but what it does is it gives a um, you know, just one more step up into yeah. this idea that we can be uh we can be anything but human if we wish. Yeah, or anything rubbish. other than human, I should say. Yeah, of course it's rubbish. Absolutely, we can't. We rubbish. cannot. It doesn't matter what you know, what we imagine in our heads that we are or that we want to be. Uh, it's just impossible for physical reality to move with your delusion. It's just not. It just has, it doesn't happen. No, and non-binary is a bit of cod swallop, and I just I laugh at non-binaries until they started pushing nullo surgery. Yeah, I heard about that. Because, you know, I thought in non-binary, mm. yep, I can see how young kids needing to fit in, that's a safe option. Mm. I, I kind of get that. But now, you know, the surgeons it's, have all come out. And, you know, I was reading some of the stuff about the surgery. So just so our listeners who have first come to us, they're lopping off young girls' breasts. Mm. Now, these are not Velcro. No. And because it's done at such a young stage, mm. their breasts yeah, left with big scarring. Mm. And so when, when they come to regret it, which they will, yeah. they cannot sew them back on, Michelle. No, no. And they're not Velcro. Uh, and no. they're doing this to girls as young as, um, I think the youngest one I've read about was 14. Mm. And it goes back to that age-old question, you know, why do men have nipples when they don't have the ability to, to breastfeed, right? Because a woman's breast is far different to a man's chest. Yes, yes complex um and mm. for the purpose of feeding our pepe our babies you know or our baby so there's you know well, why that, have we got navels then i mean you know if we're wying we're dying some things don't bother questioning they're just a diversion and a time waster 
Yeah, well, the point, sorry, the point uh, yeah, I'm making is that, that is that to, you know, to tell young girls that they're exactly the same as men is a lie is what I'm getting at. Oh, sorry, Katty. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah. There's, so, there's so many lies in this. Yeah. Like, some girls think they can get their trans girlfriend pregnant. I know. There's two girls, there's two lesbians. No, saw... They think they're going to grow back. And this is you the know? problem yes. with the education, like you were saying, you know, the, the education part. You can see that coming out now, how yeah. lost these children are. And, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure Alice is will remember but you know I'm a homeschooling mum and um you know I my daughter is not under any illusions as to you know what is and what isn't biological reality uh but you know the same can't be said uh, well I mean for, for some of you you know what I mean the, the same can't be quite said for, yeah or said at all for you know the re, her generation you know and for that reason she's very very picky about who who she hangs out with and I you know awesome. I'm like that too though by the way Yes, yes. No, I've, you know, like we've been at this so long, Michelle, mm. that, you know, we are like the zombies coming down. But we're fighting not only for humanity's last stand, it's our mm. culture's last stand. That's exactly right. Like what's, you know, we are talking about the removal of the idea that we are human. Yes. Like, <laughs> that's got nothing to do with our, with our culture mm. at all. You know, I mean, our culture is very much aligned to Mother Nature, to Papa Tunuku, you know, very yes. much aligned to, to Mother Earth yes. and the and natural yes. world around us. And, you know, the, the whole, the whole, um, you know, pretty much we try and work with nature. Try, <laughs> you know. Yes, um, yes. And, and it's almost to the point of reverence. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I grew up with the aunties that had, had the land and the section, all her gardens my, yeah, same. You know, all yep. beautiful, just wow. Yep. And coming home from school, picking the veggies and then going to the beach, getting the pippi or the kutai, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and then just from her generation to mine, that got lost. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had, had a, a Yeah, we yeah. Had, a, had a garden as well, you know, and I'm from, like, my my hapu, um, I mean, I'm from Ngati Kahungunu, but I'm also Ngati Hinepari and Ngati Mahu, so... Um, uh, so, you know, there was always, we were always on the beach, Cuddy, you know, as kids. We had a great childhood. But you oh, can't, it was lovely, you know, yeah. the big picnics, go and spend all day at the Absolutely. beach. Absolutely. With a fire. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, it's, it's a bit, um, I'm a bit, because I live near the beach. Yes. So, yeah. you know, there's none of this all day at the beach now. Zoom down, have a swim. Yeah, 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 and come home, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. I'm not far from the beach, but, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I've, I've got very All simple this simple legislation, so. eh, all this Penedo Patu. Now, Penedo Patu originally refers to the colonisation of the land by the pen. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Okay, so it fits... It does fit here because Accurate. it is by the pen. <laughs> yeah. It is by yeah. the pen. This is happening. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, when we first started about starting this group, I remember the Māori Party had just got to Parliament and I voted for them. <sighs> and Rawiri said, get a group of you together mm. and contact me. Yeah. Ta-da. And so we did. And now... All that happens is we get ghosted. Oh, he didn't. What he actually said, he he actually, um, in his comment to me, he said, Michelle, get a group of you together. We're already together. And he said, put yeah. a document together. We'd already put the document together and send it to me. So I did. And nothing. And nothing. <laughs> Thanks, Rawiri, to, to Pate Māori. Jeez. <laughs> yes. Yes. So Only some all Māori, up. obviously, that they'll listen to, not all Māori, you know. And, that's, and this is the thing that that's the biggest, you know, bugbear for me is that, they handpick, they cherry pick who they want to talk to, you know, within you know Tangata Whenua, and they yes. do it. They 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 cherry pick the ones that either they know don't really know anything, so they just go along with it anyway, or the ones that actually having worded up, they know what the, what the you know what the plan is, and they yeah. just go, yeah, sure, no worries. Yeah, you know now, and it's wrong. It mm. is wrong. We yeah. didn't mutilate our people. Never. Never, we ever, ever. Them. Nah, nah. There would I be mean, evidence for that, Kare. There'd be evidence, yeah. and there's no evidence of it whatsoever. Sorry. No, and, mm. you know, like, I think of, you know, our noble savages and, and what mm. have you. 
we did not mutilate each other. Mm-hmm. We did not collude with delusions. Mm-hmm. Māori is a very practical culture. Yeah, and I mean, look, my elders, you know, said to me, Michelle, it's practical and it's simple. It's just to mm. the point. It's not complex. Yeah. You know, it's, no. <laughs> it's all, you know, you know, we never, it, and again, you know, our culture isn't from academia. So we weren't sitting around all day. I'm sorry, I'm not saying that academics do this, you know, but we weren't, you know, really mulling over the big questions and, you know, that's not, it, just, we, we, it was we all about survival. It, yeah, exactly. It was survival. all about survival. It was about it practicality. Was. It was about, you know, just the basics. Yes, yes. And and what people, you know, because we were landowners, women, Māori Wahine were landowners and chiefs yeah. in their own right. Still are. I didn't Still have are. to change to a man to be so. Mm. No, exactly. You know, like it's just ridiculous. And so that's part of that um, jealousy stuff. So they just don't want to talk about them. Oh, no. They, they were just, you know, bad women. And, but we had the power, you know, mm. when I go to some of those kapahaka performances yeah. and I see the wahine, Michelle, and I can just see how no mm. sailor could resist them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The beautiful swishing hips. Yeah. Um, the love mm. of life, the love of, the love of our body. Yeah. Yes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and now that's all gone. So now, mm. now the Tauwe we have come along with their bloody pot of gold. Hey, just so everyone and knows what you mean, what does Tauwe mean? Anyone who's not mouldy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because <Cool. laughs> yeah, people like Parky is such a loaded word. Yeah, I know what you're saying. No, mm. and and it's taken as an insult, not as an identity sort of thing. So I go, oh no, those Tauwe If you're not mouldy, you're a Tauwe you know, mm. and um, so they've come with their pot of gold and they've turned puberty, the patholo- say that pathologized, word. pathologized. Thank you. Yeah. The pathologized puberty mm. when it's just, I don't know anyone who enjoyed puberty. No, neither do I. I mean, there might be a handful. Um, yeah, it was a terrible it's- no, it was a terrible Everything, time. Yeah, and especially yeah. for girls, you know, it's, there's so oh, yeah. many changes to your body, and that's the thing that you know we. I really do. I actually think, Cuddy, that we need to, uh, we need to look at really bringing this back to reality in terms of, you know, women are in fact the creators of humanity. You know, it's a very everyone got here. Yeah, by a everyone's here by the legs of a woman, and then she had to be pulled out the escape hatch. Exactly, (laughs) that's right. Exactly. Yep. It's only you know only women can with you know women birth have birthed entire civilizations. So we need to start acknowledging not just biological reality but biological fact, because I think this you know this idea that men or a man or imaginary man can be a creator of humanities really, I mean, look, believe what you want, but that ain't true. It's just not true. No, no this is just, it's, it's so, so dangerous because we're looking at sterilisation. We're looking at 10% decreased cognitions yeah. at a time in New Zealand where 50% of school leavers are leaving school illiterate. Yeah, Katrina was um, saying that to me the other day. 50%. I mean, who else would pour all this money into a failing system? Yeah, it's just whack. 50%. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I, because I'm a prolific reader and Mm. I've always thought, you know, being able to read and comprehend was such a gift. Yeah, right. That got me through the world because when times were hard, all I could do was pick up a book and I wasn't here. Yeah, oh, books are fabulous like that. I'm, yeah, so, I'm, mm. yeah. Um, but this internet has done so much damage to our youth. And what I've noticed, I mean, and I could be wrong again because I'm not an expert. I'm not a kapa haka leader. I'm just a Maori wahine. <laughs> I'm just a Maori wahine. Maori. Yeah, I do too. You know, but I, <laughs> you know, and like speaking of how it's an oral tradition. That's right. Okay, so academia is coming and it's coming into our marae and infiltrating. Yeah. So it's not coming out of our marae mm. into academia. No, no, no. Uh, no. Academia is forcing it into the marae. Mm. But can I just quickly oh. say that's the impression that they give everyone. That's the marae going, it's not true. It's not. It's not true. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I personally want the government out of our marae. How dare they close the door on needy people? Mm. That's never been our way, but suddenly mm. everyone's scared because you've got a cold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just being a bit shocked. I understand about the Spanish flu and the decimation, but you know, you gotta what people seem to forget, Michelle, that in 1918, mm. Maori were trying to survive in a backdrop of colonial deprivation. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, totally different. Was, yeah. Totally. totally different times. Mm. So you cannot grab the 1800s and put it into the century. Yeah. You just can't do it. No. So don't mm. be taking stuff from there and trying to put it in here because mm. we see you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we do. <laughs> yep, we absolutely. You. And, and mm. it's not true. And I'm just so scared for our youth, Michelle. Mm. I'm scared for our woman. And most of all, I'm angry. Most of all, I'm angry that you just had to pay off some people and it was so that suddenly my granddaughter doesn't have the right as a four-year-old to go to the toilet without a man in there. Mm. Yep. It does anger me, Cuddy, that I had more rights than this girl sitting in my lounge. I went to every public toilet of my own volition with no men in there. And now these our kids have to go and change in changing rooms where men are. You know, it's just what the hell. Mm. You want me to take my four-year-old in there when there's men in there that aren't her far No, I'm not doing it. It's, I just won't. She can piss outside. The very idea of it, Cuddy, it's, just, it's tapu. You know, and it, it, what that means that for people, for our listeners, it means that it's forbidden. You know, that's sacred. You know, you know, things for women, for wahine, are, are sacred. That's been part of our culture. And now it's been torn, you know, it's been given. torn away from us. Yeah, and, give, and just and handed given. over. Handed over to the white man. Mm. The same people who, you know, like I was listening to one of the um, Native Pride musics, um, because they're so cool, but they're saying, and you want me to buy stuff with the head of the man that colonized us. Yeah. You know, mm. you know, and it's the same deal. But why should children, anyone's children, yeah. have to go to a public toilet mm. that's got men in there? Child safeguarding. They? Someone said this on I'm so sorry, I wish I could remember who it was that said it on Twitter. Might have been Sarah, Sarah Fillmore. Anyway, um, you know, children, child safeguarding is everybody's business. You know, it's not, not just women. No, yeah. that's, and telling us to mind our own business, I like, get fucked. You know, this it is, is our about, business. Yeah, bloody oath, it's our business, you know. Yeah. And so I don't think people realise that when they go to a public toilet, like, so at about eight or nine, say, nine or ten, around that age, we let them go on their own. That's right, just to, yeah, just to build up their, yeah, it's yes. great, it, yeah, and when we started doing it, it was great, but man, it came to a stop pretty soon. I still yes. go, and like, you can't even to the, do that anymore. No. no, no, no. You cannot let your children go to a public toilet on their own. No, no way. You just can't, because mm. the New Zealand 53rd Parliament has opened those spaces up for any man who all he has to do is say he's a woman, he doesn't need to shave. He doesn't need to put on a frock. He doesn't need to lop his dick off. All no. he has to say is, I'm a woman. Mm, exactly. That's what, that sex, that's what sex self-ID is, cut in. I think there's a lot of people oh. that, and by the way, I blame mainstream media for this because they are freaking yes. shithouse at informing people. Yes. And that's why, you know, you're thinking of going to, to do all this, you know, pamphlet, you know, to try and inform inform people, yeah. better inform people. But the reality is that the sex self-ID laws in New Zealand and where I live too, you don't need to have any medical intervention. You don't need to have any medical um, professional um, sign off on it. You just need to claim that you're a woman. If you're a man, you don't have to do a goddamn thing about yourself. You don't have to shave your beard, nothing. Don't have to take any cross, you know, wrong sex hormones, sorry. Nothing. And you can claim to legally be a woman. Yeah. Unbelievable. And everything. And so we've got the um Gavin Hubbard. Yeah. Yeah. Anton Weatherly <sighs> and the cycling. Yeah. Who just took out the cycling. Yeah. Um, I think um Boxing New Zealand said so 
done the world thing that so long as they have um, haven't had puberty up to twelve years old. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Rugby New Zealand, I believe, mm-hmm. is holding firm. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, well, that's good news. Well, especially after watching the Women's World Cup ignite the world. Yeah, I haven't seen that. <laughs> yeah, I no, I've just great. seen it in the news and I watched yeah, a yeah. few videos and, mm. man, the crowd was excited and exciting and they had all these poise and it was awesome cutting uh, what I did see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to go and yeah. I'll have to source some videos and watch it. <laughs> you yeah, know, and some of the huckers were just on point. You know, and just wow. And so that's a sport. But over there, you've got your um, surfing mm. and that skateboarding taken out by a man. We've got that beauty contest in America that a Thai business owner owns where a big, fat, ugly Thai man won it. Mm. Um, we've got the Santa and fetish gear. You know, and Pon- that's you know, in Ponsonby, Ponsonby, Auckland, for those Ponsonby, who don't know. Auckland. Hey, you have to chuck a photo up in the video, Cuddy. Oh, well. So, of course, lots of letters have been mm. fired off about that. Mm. It's just everywhere. It and is. then drag queen, those yeah. sex clowns, reading why, out the library. Yeah, why on why? earth do men want, need to have little children validate them? Like, that's just off. And if you don't off. see that, like, you know, if parents aren't seeing this, for what it actually is, I just, I, I don't know. Has parenting changed over the years? Like how to parent your children? Like I'm pretty sure it's the same. You know what I mean? Like I grew up believing the sex clowns and and the transvestites and everything because we knew them. They were Mm. just odd people. And we knew because it was spoken about behind the back of your hand it had something to do with adults and sex. Yeah, absolutely. And drugs as well. Like drugs and alcohol are a big part of that culture. Yeah. And now these sex clowns coming to read to your children. What, what, what? You know, and they say, oh, it's, you know, it's for, for diversity and, and inclusion. I don't see anyone else being asked to read to children. I don't see, you know, komatua. I don't see the fireman. I don't see policemen. I don't see anyone else in the community being asked. Oh, just yes. drag queens. Oh, hey, just sex dolls, sex yeah. clowns. Sex clowns. Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Exalanzic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Credit. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, there's Exalanzic, and um, it was mm. around the same time. Oh, it was out one of Posey's kids. Oh, and, like, when she was back. Yeah, yeah, when she was over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that was pretty clowns. loud, that one, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, I know. I remember that. All oh, Exalanzic, sex clowns. So there's <laughs> a lot of women fighting, but for every time, it's a bit like that whack mole game guacamole or you know whack-a-mole so every time we raise our head to fight bang yeah bang yeah bang. Bang. yeah absolutely it is like playing you know, whack-a-mole what, yeah yeah new zealand women have lost their jobs mm. because of this and it's only going to get worse new zealand women have lost their um professional standing because mm. of this yep you know, there's a lot happening and back to the lame stream media mm. You know, of course, they're singing from the same song sheet. They've just been given 50 mil or something, and then now they're merging. They are complicit. Who gave them 50 mil, Cuddy? Tell everyone. Oh, Jab Cinder. Jab Cinder. The government. <laughs> Jab Cinder, mate. Yeah. She's all for this. And, yeah. and the other thing that really annoys me with this, Michelle, is those fuckers in there will never, ever be in public spaces. Outside no, of course of not. Of course they not. They won't be at the toilet. They're they dictating. The pool. Exactly. They're dictating our lives for us. And with yes. those, they're not like, you know, and I think actually, I think Rex might have said it in one of her videos, and they're never going to be in the Courtney Lounge ever. Ever. You know? Ever. <laughs> So then, you know, and like when, and I've made a promise to myself, if I meet mm. one in the wild and the girls or children's changing rooms, I'm going to kick up a fuss. Yeah, good. Yeah. I'm cringing at the thought and I'm really scared because I don't like confrontation, which you probably won't believe because I'm such a big mouth. But um, <laughs> I, I have promised myself I will do that. Yeah, good on you. Maybe yep. I'll get you. I'll put our Kai on soon. Hey, I have to stop recording anyway, so, so you can go and do awesome. that. I'll stop the recording and then we'll come back in about 10 minutes. Awesome. Yeah, so now it's just infiltrated and saturated everywhere. There isn't any rock left unturned 
that this gender woo-woo ideology hasn't infiltrated. And the reason for that too is because when you pull apart our very humanity, anything goes, and they know that. Yes, Yes. you know, and and what I, you know, and the people at the top of this, because I'm not talking personally, I'm talking ideology and the drivers, you know, we can never, ever underestimate how much they hate us. Given the chance, Michelle, I believe they would lobotomize us Mm. hollow us out, wear our skin, and sit us in the corner as breeders. Nothing we can do, Kare, will ever please them or satisfy them. No, no that's that moreism. I see, you know, um, the moreism, it's never good enough, and they always want more. And so what a terrible way to live with that distasteful taste in your mouth of always wanting something else and mm. nothing being good enough. What a yeah. miserable way to live. Yeah, but, that's true. You know, how, how did you but, put it the other day when we were talking about it, when we were talking about perfection? You put it so beautifully. I can't remember now off the top of my head. You said, Oh, the perfectionism to me, it, it's a co- colonial ideal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. perfectionism yeah. because it goes back to wanting more and never being good enough. Mm, yeah. What is in, in direct conflict to us as Māori because I've been brought mm. up and because we've been brought up with colonial deprivation, mm. we have had to make do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've and that's, had to make do. And I think, you know, perfection is, it's it's really quite a trap because, you know, you see it all the time, like, you know, with online, as I'm sure you're aware, you know, like uh, online influencers and not just them, but all, you're pretty much, you know, you can't make a mistake. You're not allowed to say something wrong. You post something that perhaps someone else doesn't like. And so, therefore, you're assumed to be, I don't know, believing something yeah. that, you know, it's just nuts. Absolute it, it insanity. That's a purity spiral. Yeah. And, you know, all, all part of that. Whereas and it's we're not, not it's, perfect. No, that's what I was going to say. Exactly. We, you know, it is actually human, you know, to to be fallible, to make mistakes. And it's actually good to make mistakes. Like, I, you know, mistakes help you so much in so many ways. They help you learn. You know, when you fucked up, (laughs) and I can tell you from experience, you know, you learn straight away. I I remember going through my tohus, you know, when I was a a student and that. And I did my most. Explain what uh, I'm my, my um, uh, um, qualification, it's a, a paper, my degree. So yeah. when, when I was all, all my chef papers or, mm. you know, my teaching papers or, yeah. you know, it's my, my tohu is what I work towards, so my, my degree. And, and I remember all these studies I did, I learned the most when I had to reset or rewrite. Exactly, exactly. That's right. You know, and, it, that, and it stays, it know, tends to stay yeah. with you, doesn't it? I think. Yeah. And I and I think there's some value in that. But um and also too, I think um, you know what our sense of humor is like, as I'm generalizing, obviously, but we do yes. tend to like yes. laugh at ourselves a lot and take the piss out yes. of ourselves and yes. you know, the self-deprecating kind of, you know, humor that we have. Um you know, it's a very different humor to uh well. Could I say park here? I don't know, but, you know, it's a, that's just the way yeah, that we are, I guess. <laughs> yes, and, you know, to be able, that self-depreciating humour is a direct um, acknowledgement, a sign mm. of our humanness. That's right. Exactly. Because we're people, and as people, we're not infallible. No. exactly. Actually, to be fair, I think, you know, when I think about it, there's all kinds of... Um, you know, even the Aussie humour every now and then, Cuddy, you know, they yes. take the piss out of yes. themselves, you know, or they used to, I don't know yes. about anymore, but, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, um, but now it's kind of, you know, everyone has to be everything all at once and know everything and be perfect and not make a mistake and fuck off. <laughs> it's just, yeah. oh, just all, ridiculous. All the funny bone is gone because yeah. everything's offensive. Well, you know what's offensive to me, Michelle? Mm. Fucking men putting their penis into little children. I find that offensive. It's not a good look, is it? No. I don't, you know, I find it offensive. This rainbow crew mm. is like, you know, 10, 20% of the population, but 80% of the pedophiles and sex offenders. Yeah. That offends me. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's not pretend what's happening here. Mm. They are grooming 
and mutilating our children and just mm. need to wake up. Mm. And I don't give a fuck who I've offended. Bring mm. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Absolutely. this is the reality. This yeah. is the reality. They want to put their penis into little children. Yeah. Any orifice. Especially the surgically made ones. Yeah, not over my dead body. No freaking way. No, no. There's no way I'm going to lie, lie down on, on this issue. No, no way. No. And same, like, I'm really feeling for our woman prisoners at the moment. Well, for all mm, our prisoners. Same. Yeah. Uh, you know, the woman having to be locked up with men. Now, I've heard two, two schools of thought and two word on the streets. Go on. Like, go as on. a plus. Okay, it was put through the submissions on the self-sex ID that there were three pregnancies and numerous assaults. Mm. That was okay. in, That's in those right. submissions. That's right. In yep. women's prisons, mm. right, and that there's numerous assaults and they can't escape and they're stalked and it's very unsafe. Mm. And then I hear from another prisoner that, um, oh, no, nah, as soon as they get in here, we put the beats on them. <laughs> so, yeah, I, mm. I guess it depends I on where they where. Sorry, Cuddy, but I guess it depends on where they where they're um incarcerated. Maybe I don't know. Dep yeah, it just depends. Yeah, I guess because um, we've got Auckland Prison, Arahata, and Wellington, and Christchurch Women's. We only have three women's prisons. Yeah, that's right. And how many men's? Do you know? Oh God, it's like it's thirteen or fourteen. Yes, I was going to say, I think it's a dozen More or than so, double, Kate. more than double the women. So that just goes, to, so tell, that goes to show, yeah, exactly, goes to show, you know, the the vast difference <laughs> between men and women when you look at, um, you know, just the prisons. So anyway, sorry, car yeah. carry on cutting. Yes, and, and so like some of our prisoners over here, and just to make it clear, I don't know anyone in prison at the moment. Yeah, I don't either. That doesn't mean that doesn't mm. mean I can't think about them or wonder how they're doing. You know, it's like because in sociology, they look to, you know, the most the most needy in society, uh, you know, as a temperature to figure out how society is running. And now if we've got yeah. violent men in women's prisons, that ain't a very yeah. good temperature. No. That's no, a massive that's climate terrible. change. That's a huge climate change, okay. isn't it? There's our climate change problem right there. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so you can call yourself whatever you want, mm. but humans can't change sex. And since right. when are mm. children and women human shields for violent men? Yeah, that's right. That's and that's the other thing. They say, Oh, but you know, they might be beaten up or they might they might feel uncomfortable in the men. So what? They've got nothing to do with women. Why should women always have to be a shield, the human shield for, for these for yeah. these men who hate us anyway? Like what the fuck is yeah. that about? And why isn't there a unit why? in the men's prison where the men with synthetic sex identities can inform how that runs? Because, because they don't you know, want it. What? That's why. That's why cut it. Yeah. Because they don't want it. Because it you won't know, affirm them. That's no, no, why. They want to come. One, and that's that's the other part people aren't getting. No. for half of these, it's a sexual deviation. Absolutely. And so every time, so every time you're insisting you call some bloke a she or her, yeah. he's getting excited and getting his kicks. Mm. Absolutely, he's getting a hard on. Let's just be honest about it. And that's why, yeah, you know, I did a video for Women's Action Group yesterday, just quickly cut in, you know. Oh. I do see in, you know, in the movement, among the turban, <laughs> the so-called turban, um, I do see, you know, sometimes some groups and some, you know, some women, sometimes some men, you know, demanding that we use pronouns, uh, that we are kind to these AGPs that we are, you know, that we need to think more about them. We need to know we fucking don't. No, we fucking don't. Not at all. And, no, and also, don't. too, it's always women. Whenever that, whenever it comes to, oh, you know, oh, you're being transphobic, you need to, you know, tone it down a bit. Guess who comes off second best, Cuddy? It's always the woman. And yeah. that is just, that is insane. This is a woman's movement. Why would we do that to women when we know that humans cannot change sex, you know? And that's the thing that really irks me. Like, I mean, you know, Manawa Hene caught it all. You know, we don't play that, that game. Never. No. We have to keep our language hard line. There mm. are men, there are women, there are intersex. End of. There are men with fetishes. 
mm. you know. And that's who we're, you know, it's the ideology. You cannot change that's sex. Right. You will never be a woman. I'm going to dig you up in 100 years and you'll come back as a man. Mm, mm, Irrelevant right. of your gold sandals and lame purse. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's just I can't believe the governments are doing this and we're back to money. It's it's a terrible yeah. place to be, Michelle, because I'm at the stage in my life where I now believe everything's been a big, fat fucking lie. Well, it makes you question everything that you've ever it been does. told and believed, doesn't it? Like, I, I mean, I've been, you know, I think quite a few of us have, you know, talked about it, but I'm, I'm the same too, Cuddy. Like, I always used to, I, I wouldn't say, I would I would never characterise myself as hardcore left, um, but yes. I always voted, I tended to vote left. You know, the Greens I supported, yes. like I was actually a Greens member at one point. Yes. Uh, freaking bloody withdrew that membership quick smart, <laughs> you know. Uh, so so this, this has really pushed me to question not just my beliefs, but also too, Cuddy, like, I'm now listening. Like I take the time out now to listen to people that I before would never have given the time of day to, you know, just yes. because I'm thinking, you know, I need to start challenging my beliefs. I need to start thinking a bit more, you know, deeper about, about you know, what what I believe, you know, not just what I believe, but what I know is real and all that type of stuff and how yes. I factor that into my own political life I guess you could say you know because it's very important I think that women need to really do that they really need to think about um I know that it's a pain in the ass but still you know the personal is political it's just a fact whether we yes. like it or not you know yes. and that's by design how I that's why I see it anyway it's by design so it's in our best interest to get you know not so much ahead of it but you know try and try and help you know try and get that um, explained or rather sorted out in our own heads about where we where we stand with that. Now, and look, yeah. I can tell you, so it was the state elections, a uh, state election rather here in Victoria yesterday. Labour won, so Dan Andrews. Despot oh. Dan is in again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh. But I'll tell you I what know. I did, Cuddy. I um when I voted yesterday, actually, my girl and I we went and had our hair our hair do's our hair done. And then and then I then I went to vote, and I had my mana wahine korero, you know, wahine noun, adult, human, female, you know, mana wahine korero shit, and I'm saying them <laughs> anyway. And so um, uh, the Labour candidate, she actually's a friend of mine. Well, I well I know her quite well anyway. So um, yeah. so she was there, and it was really lovely to see her. So you know, I took a pamphlet anyway. Um, and um, and then I had the uh. Animal Party, who is um, his daughter, identifies as a boy, and his son identifies as a girl or a woman. Oh my god! Wow. The Animal Party, right? Oh, animal Rights Party, whatever it's called. Anyway, she came up to me with, "Oh, would you like?" No, I never had it finished. I said, "No, thank you, no." <laughs> no. And then, and then the Greens, they came. Anyway, she seemed quite nice, you know. And um, she said, "Oh, would you like?" I said, "No, thank you." And she said, oh, what does your T-shirt say? And I thought, yes, here's my in. <laughs> and so I read, I said, so this is from, my, you know, my culture, Māori. And I said, wahine means woman. And the definition of wahine in our culture is adult human female. And mana wahine kōrero, that's the group that, you know, I co-founded. I said, in our culture, we don't believe, or rather, you know, men can never be women. And she went, oh. <laughs> she, she walked off. And there, <laughs> there were two men in front of in front of me in, in, in the queue, and they turned around at me and they and they smiled from ear to ear. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I got that. In. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, New Zealand unanimously passed this bullshit, and I will be spoiling my vote. Yeah, fair enough too, Cuddy. And I urge every everyone to do the same mm. but I will be spoiling my vote I've got some woman adult human female stickers because I will right. not yeah vote yep. for anyone who cannot tell me what a woman is how dare you deny my mother and my queen how That's dare right. you denigrate them how dare you mm. Absolutely. and you do it happily and sign it on the bottom line what do you what do you now think Dame Fina Cooper can be a man <laughs> mm. You know, it, it's so frustrating, and 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 I'm I'm going to say this to all you parents with your trans children. Yeah. 
you are mutilating your child, you have Mushausen's by proxy. You are mm. harming your child irreversibly. Why are you codependent? Is your need to be liked and needed so high that mm. you're going to damage your own child? And the reason your child thinks they're trans is because they're being groomed in the schools. Yeah. Yeah, it's a vicious and cycle. It's, mm. it's vicious. So, like I talk about Moko not having the same rights I had. Yeah, yeah. So when she goes to school, Kari, and she, you know, is presented with these delusional kids whose parents are transing them, because mm. we all know who's making the decision here. It's like a vegan cat. Yeah. My cat's right. not vegan. No, neither would mine be. <laughs> he does think he's a staffy, but that's another story. <laughs> My little staffy cat. But, you know, you are transing your child who's being heavily groomed out of school. A mm. four-year-old will go mm. to kindy. And if that four-year-old gets the pronoun wrong, mm. they are ostracised, picked off, oh, no. and separated until they get it right. I just, I just so cannot. Uh, that's traumatising so, to a child, isn't it, Cuddy? Like the trauma associated with that. That's why you know the plan. When I I took you out of school, I actually used to work at the school that. Um, I used to work at the school that she used to go to before we started homeschooling, and the plan. That was primary school. The plan was to put her into high school. If it wasn't for homeschooling, I wouldn't have even known. Even though I worked at the school, I would not have known about any of this. No. You know? See, it's all buried. And yeah. that's our mainstream media. Like, I'm part of a letter writing group, and we're on to the media. Wonderful yeah. woman writing all these letters. Yeah. Nearly every week we have to write to the media to tell them to pull their heads in, and they're wrong. Yeah. Look at how the media vilified Jennifer Scott. Yes, that wonderful woman, Jennifer Scott, oh, she's just you know? incredible. She's a powerhouse. Absolutely. And she got vilified yeah. from the media. Yeah. The media's pushing the jab. Mm. You know, since when is my health anyone else's problem? It's not. It's not at all. Or or since when mm. is my health anyone else's business? Mm, that's right. Because I'm saying it isn't. And if we don't want to be jabbed, we don't have to be. No. Oh, and that's not good enough. You locked us out. That's, that lockdown has done irreparable damage. It has broken yeah. the social cohesion. Yeah. And that is the problem for me. Get a jab. Don't get a jab. I really don't give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's right. It's your choice. If you want to get a jab, go for it. You yes. know, I've got every, my, you know, myself and you know, my friend, we've got every every other jab except that one, you know. Thank you. Same, and All yet we still get called jab. anti, you know, anti jab. Like, off. <laughs> no, and, and then, <laughs> hey, all this evidence coming out, all that glitters isn't gold. That's so right. So, in combination with the jab and the tranny thing, mm. they're um, rendering us as body parts, and then we've got surrogacy, and oh my god, the adoption laws here. Yeah, like, I don't care who you are. Mm. I don't care what your fucker papa is. Yeah. There is a reason men have been forbidden from adopting children in the past. That's right. And it should it should remain that way, I believe. And it won't. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm sorry to all the men I love. I'm not talking about to. I'm talking no. about the class of men, mm. the class of men that are harming children and women. That's right. And the, the thing is that we know as women and, you know, if, if the powers that be, you know, they do admit it eventually when they're pushed, but, you know, predatory men will do anything to get their hands on children. That is proven. And the more we ignore that, the worse it'll get. And, you know, if, if I just, you know, point to the church, what happened with friggin' Catholic yes. Christian, you know, yeah. oh, my God. That, Everyone, yeah. and we would, p parents have been talking for ages about this. I know here in Australia, they were, you know, and they were they were sent from here to the, you know, they were just dismissed, yes. ignored, you know, mm -hmm. exactly what the TRAs and the MRAs are telling us now about this, yep. you know, synthetic sex agenda. Oh, oh, you're lying. That's on, you know, that's exactly what the freaking church did. It's the same yep. tactic. Exactly yes. the same tactic. It is, and it's just I'm, I'm very fearful for the young children because children, they, see what? Because it's bloody porn, mate. This is porn. It is. Because I, I think there's a progression. Now, I don't know this. I ain't no scholar, mate. But I was, I was been talking about yeah, it, and there seems to be a progression with the porn. And I, I was reading these documents, and, oh, it was very disturbing. 
is because this year, this young man was 19. He was a porn addict. He could not leave his house because of his porn addiction. Mm. Because every time he saw a female, he needed to masturbate mm. to the point of blood. Okay. Ooh. So then, and you cannot withdraw from porn. You have to stop it. It's like yeah. any other addiction. Yeah. Some addictions come with harm reduction, others don't. Mm. Porn, there is no harm reduction. You have to stop it. Yeah. Now, I believe the progression of porn mm. gets right up to the end, and the end, because they've already done bestiality and all, all yeah. the choking, all the bloody anal, all, the, all that's gone. It's no longer serving their purpose. Mm. So then we land at pedophilia and sissy porn. Mm. It's the end of where those two tracks. That's the mm. only two places left. Mm. So maybe sissy comes after pedophilia or they're together. I wouldn't know. I think someone like Genevieve Gluck or like that. that, that She's know. incredible. She, yo, Genevieve, she, she definitely yeah. knows. But mm. this is just what I think, you know, mm. that seeing the progression and it's like any addiction, more of the same till you get the needs met. Mm. Oh, and so when you're past all oh. the choking, Past all the mm. anal and it's no longer serving you, you end up at sissy porn and pedo. Mm. The progression of the disease. All right, so this don't make me right, but this is what I've been noticing. Yeah, fair enough. And look, you know, this channel is uh is to dis or rather this this corridor is it's a corridor, yeah. it's a talk, it's not a lecture yeah. <laughs> or you know, or yeah, you know, an academic just... assertion or anything. It's um yeah, you know, we're just talking. Look, you know, I think um Thing also too, they don't realise when it seems that when when these men are porn addicted, and I'm not even necessarily talking about oh. you know the, like AGPs or any or any you know from from the synthetic sex agenda side, just men in general, like they don't realise they don't understand that when they're porn addicted. I'm laughing because they just because they're so oblivious to it. That yes. there are quite a few telltale signs, like pretty much uh -huh. immediately. Yes, there's red flags. Well, no. Yes, yes. One of the telltale signs for me mm. is when I'm speaking with a bloke mm. is whether he makes eye contact or not. Yes, yeah, that's a huge one, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and this is just in my personal life and talking, and if you can't make eye contact with me, yeah. I'd put a bet you're a porn user. Yeah, yeah. And and just other, yeah. other things like, oh, so you don't want a relationship. Oh, and, you know, just telling you about, like, their um, – Oh, I've been thinking about, you know, coming over to your place at two in the morning. Oh, fucking what? Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah. fucking crap. Oh, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're kind of and, sharing with, with you, you know, like their fantasy. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, that's pretty yeah. pornified. You know? And it's gone. The thing too is, and I, it's sad that I see a lot of a lot of uh, women, single mums also, you know, there's a there, there's no longer a dating, like a proper you know what? What no. I would have considered to be like dating etiquette anymore. It's just a hookup culture. Yes, yes. From what I can just tell, from what yep, I can tell, so, you know. And, and I just dating. Mm, sorry, hey, kind of, da dating is sharing texts. You're dating. I know. That's like what <laughs> I don't get. And I think because um maybe it's because that we were born. You know, we grew up in a different era. You know, we're not led by. Mm. Although we're on here quite a bit, I know I'm on online quite a bit because of the activism we do. But because we were we grew up in an era where our relationships, you know, obviously um offline, you know, all that type of stuff. You know, the yeah, online absolutely. things. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very very different and. um Took me a while actually to understand that. Like even speaking to you know the younger younger woman in the movement, um, and I'm not being nasty or anything, but they do they kind of see the relationship differently than like what you and I have, or like, you know what yes. I mean, like in our generation. Yes. If that makes sense, if that makes sense. Yes, <laughs> and, and anyway. part of that part of that's good and freeing, but the mm. backlash it's that backlash that we always got <sighs> to think about. We must think bigger. You know, put it out, and and so when we're talking, and 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 I get so annoyed having to do disclaimers. I'm not a fucking idiot. I know what yeah, I'm exactly. talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> so, but, yeah. but because of your, you know, um, perfectionism. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, and it's Purity like that just in a game of Scrabble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is a bit. Yeah. You know, all those words. All you said that wrong. Well, so what? 
Yeah, women exactly. are still being raped in jail, children right. are still being mutilated. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing, if, if they get these children young enough, mm. we'll never get them out. Yeah, That's and one group, thing. groomers know that. Yeah, we'll never get them back. Mm. And secondly, if they get them young enough, Michelle, they are sentenced mm. to a life without sexual pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is just abhorrent. It's, to never. It's abuse. I can't see any, I can't see how it cannot be. No, it, it is abuse. And it's just coming and it's here and it's thick and fast. It's saturated everything. Like I say, the funding, they just get fistfuls. And we've got women selling stickers and baking cakes at cake stalls to raise funds. I, I know. Actually, here in Victoria, too, they get, like, they have been given so much money. Yes, they've got. They've, they've actually got a flash as building in Melbourne. I haven't seen it yet. I've just seen photos of it, like a flash as building of LGBTQIA. Da, da, da. Yes. And um, I know that there is a lesbian. It might have changed, but I, um, but I know of or I knew of a group last year. I think it was. They asked, you know, before the building had been finished. Um, they, you know, they were actually inviting, you know, inquiries from the LGBTQ community about what, you know, renting out rooms and spaces for whatever work it is that they're doing. Anyway, I know of a lesbian group that applied and were denied because yeah, they're they lesbian. Didn't. Yeah, of course they were. So it's not for L at all. I don't know why they bother putting the L in front of the, you know, in front of that moniker anymore. It's just LGB, LGB. Well, the for them, but for them, yeah, but for them it's T-Q-U-I and some some G, you know, some gay men, but yeah. It's um, it's just a mess, an absolute mess, and I can't help but think of how, you know, big pharma is definitely right behind this. There's just no two ways no. about it for me. No, big pharma, because if, if you get these kids young enough, so no surgery, they're going to use ten yeah. percent. They're lifelong patients. Yeah, exactly. The mistake is built. The mistake is built into the first surgery. So just for example, I'll talk about the phalloplasty that they do. So, yeah, I'm a young woman, and, and I've decided I'm a bloke. You can lock my breasts off, and now I want to diddles. All right. So what are they going to do? They're going to take my quad thigh mm. or my forearm <laughs> and roll this into an appendage mm. and sew it to my pubis. Yeah. Now, the mistake is in the first surgery. Mm. One, this flesh Mm. has a cellular memory of gaining weight yeah. and getting fat and building muscle. Yeah, right. right? So it does that mm. while it's on there. 80% fall off. Mm. 80%. Mm. And there's mm. all sorts of things like urethral lengthening oh. and all of this stuff, you know. Now, this is just, tapu, tapu tapu Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know. Just, oh, just send shivers down my spine. Oh. Yeah, it does. Eh? It's just, and I see these surgeries. I see these young girls out there, topless, with big, thick, like two fingers long scarring, and the guy. Yes, you couldn't afford a good surgeon, but it's gone through. Like the money involved is enough to make governments accept the bribe. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It has been enough to make normal people turn. Mm. It's enough money to um, fund it globally mm. because, you know, if, if this is what the New Zealand rainbows are getting, like that five or six bites of the funding, imagine globally. Yeah, exactly. Um, hey, just what I'm thinking while we're talking about the mutilation of children, did you know that Susie Green from Mermaids has resigned? Yes. Yeah, right. Rats and thinking ships spring to mind. I see her... Yeah. See her going to a country without extradition orders, setting up shop again. Really? That's what my Christmas ball says, yes. She'll <laughs> go to a country that doesn't extradite back to the UK mm. and set up shop again. Because mm. people that are that mentally deranged, the yeah. only way they stop each other is when they die. Yeah. Because there's so much power, you know, like these, these youth – have been given all the power because all they have to go is tear, transphobe, and bang, mm. you're shut down and lost your job. Mm. They have they haven't worked a lick of a day in their life. Oh, they don't have, have any, that's right. They don't have their families. Like they've not had children. They have no idea these kids. They, they haven't even tried to be men. No. Oh God no. And 
you know, and they can't anyway, <laughs> you know, like, all right, darling, how many have you got? Sorry. Good no, girl. don't be sorry. Our pie. Our lunch is nearly ready. Nanny will close that. Good girl. <laughs> Just help yourself to the bookies, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so hey, no, the mutilation. And then, so what happened from this mutilation is we're getting these mental people, mm. women, who say, I don't want to be a woman. Ooh, yuck, take my titties. Ooh, yuck. And the fuckers go and get pregnant, the most womanly yeah. thing out. Exactly. And then they watch the whole pregnancy language and system mm. to suit them. And all I can say is, fuck off. Yeah, exactly. You yep. and your delusion get to the back of the queue. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, That's got nothing to do with us, with the rest of us. You want to go and do that to yourself? Well, you know, whatever. <laughs> Don't you come gunning for mothers and children. No. And so now it's um, uterus havers, bleeders, mm. front hole havers, menstruators. <laughs> menstruators. No, no, we're women. Yeah. We ain't giving that word up. It's taken. No, hell no. Don't you dare sis me. <laughs> mm, yeah, sis my ass. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm not a subset of being a woman. No. Mm. And same with, yes, same with yes. Māori, same with, you know, we yeah. don't identify as Māori, we are Māori. You know, we can't separate, yeah. you know, our, in fact, I don't think any person can, you know, <laughs> like think of yourself outside mm -hmm. of your culture. Like how how does that work? No. And <laughs> and because we think so differently, you know, and then you mm. get the park here and you think they're tricking you and go, oh, well, so I think your beliefs first, your religion or your Māoriness. You know, exactly. Separate, so yeah, I was Greater. talking about this. Greater. I was talking about this on Twitter yeah. the other day, actually. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And it's not separate. No, we, we it's don't not. Think it's well, we, we don't. Think we don't. But we don't live our lives in that like in that fashion either. You know, I was saying we don't think of us like you know. Sometimes I've heard okay. some, some feminists say you know that we are you a woman first or your culture second or you know what you know which one comes first or second. It's like well, they're intertwined. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. you're, you're cutting yeah. out. Yeah, no, the has just arrived to pick up. Oh, more cool. cool. All right, I'll let you go, Kale. Excellent call. And I'll text, I'll text, oh, wonderful. I'll text you back, and if we need to go again, we will. Yeah, if you want. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Mwah. I'll just think the whānau. <laughs> Love yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. Love you too. We'll take a village, tribal council, sister circle, unafraid. Uh, the true, the future is dependent on the youth where we are built. This is warfare, this is not a drill. Yes, we are not afraid. Cause this is warfare This is not a drill